Welcome to Aztecs Now. A couple of tough games back to back. Not easy to play. And no excuses at Ann Arbor. And then against TCU, last year's number two team in the Associated Press after their win against uh, Wisconsin in the Rose Bowl. And all the talk about, they're not as good. They're not as good. And they're probably not as good because they've lost Andy Dalton, a quarterback. And suddenly they have a 6'5", a 6'5 guy with a better arm, Paul Hall, who had a big, big day. And TCU is not as good, but they are very, very, very good, despite the fact that they were out of the uh, top 25 for the first time uh, in several years that they came in for this game. And for this game, big crowd at the stadium, 44,000. It's homecoming. Want to see a hit early in the first quarter? Check this one out. Brian Stahovich punt. Eric Pinkins just lays out TCU's Sky Dawson, one of the really good and fast guys in this league. Big play by number 27. Then late in the second quarter, Aztecs down 17 0. Larry Parker, what a continual great play he's had. Intercepts Paul Hall in the end zone. Aztecs going halftime. Could have been 24 0, 17 0. They will come back here in the third quarter. Number 14 coming out here, Ryan Lindley with Escobar. 88. 16 yard touchdown, 20 to 7 TCU. Then in the fourth quarter, Lindley, Chad Young, a walk on fullback, who's now on scholarship and comes up with his first catch, his first career touchdown. Aztecs are in it. It's there, 2014, still in it. More defense, Miles Burris, number nine. On third down, sacks Paul Hall, forces the punt. Aztecs come up short, though. TCU wins it, 27 14. Uh, the meeting between the two winningest coaches of the all time in the Mountain West Conference, Gary Patterson and Rocky Long and uh, Mr. Patterson and TCU came out on top. You told us that. You told us that because all this talk about, well, they're not as good. They're not as good. My gosh, Rocky, that's a heck of a team out there. That's a very good football team. Oh, boy. Team. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're a little inexperienced and made some mistakes uh, in a couple games that cost them the game. But mm -hmm. uh, they're still as talented. They're still as fast. They're still as explosive. They're good on defense. I mean, they're still a great football team. And you mentioned this would be the fastest team. And I went back in preparing in terms of the radio broadcast, and I'm seeing Greg McCoy running a 4-3, and these running backs all at about 4-3, 4-4, and not just a back, but I mean, Rocky, legitimate four deep, just keep running those backs in. And, and Josh Boyce and Sky Dawson, the, you know, the indoor 60-meter uh, guy in track and field, I mean, that is fantastic speed. Yeah, they're the fastest team we'll play, oh, including wow. everybody else on our schedule. And, and we've improved our team speed, too, quite a bit. Mm -hmm. But we're not as fast as they are. Yeah. What has happened, and I know if coaches had an answer for this, you got to ask, ask the question, but you really think there is no answer. If you had the answer, you'd do it. But in terms of slow starts, and you've had slow starts several times this year, including at Michigan, is there an answer to that? Because, that it, it, again, suddenly you look up and it's 17 nothing, and think, how'd that happen? See, I, I, I don't see it that way. I, I don't see it as a slow start. Mm -hmm. uh, if you remember the Michigan game and this last game, is, is fresher on everybody's mind. We moved the ball, but we didn't put it in the end zone. We were, we were in the red zone several times, but we didn't score points. I mean, we, we fumble a snap from center or it's 3-3. Three to three. We, we, uh, we fumble the ball on the one-yard line. Ronnie fumbles the ball on the one-yard line or it's 10-10. Ten to ten. It, It's not like we, we haven't moved the ball. Right. We're not finishing. We're making some mistakes and we're not finishing, and th and that's a problem. I mean, you got to be able to finish. I'm, I'm not discounting that fact. Mm -hmm. You got to be able to finish, but we are moving the ball, uh, so it's not a slow start. But we got to learn to finish. Would it be not so much a slow start, but the defense has played it seems better later, better in second halves? Is that a problem? Uh, well, that's a problem, and and I think it's related to scout teams. Uh, uh, you, you play. We've played two very talented football teams the last two weeks. Yeah, and, and you don't and you don't get that feel in practice with the scout team. So you're not used to the speed of the game. Right. So kids go into the game whether they want to or not, and they've been advised not to, obviously. And they're and they're supposed to be able to adjust the game speed on the instant, but they don't. It takes them a while to get used to the speed on the other side of the ball, and as they get used to the speed, they start settling in and playing better. Now the two touchdown passes they threw. Those guys are faster than oh, our yeah, guys. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. and the and the throws were good, and there was no pressure on the quarterback. And when you play man coverage, that stuff's going to happen. Ronnie was not a fumbler last year. I mean, on the other hand, I mean he was he was Walter Payton, as in never put it on the ground. What happens with that? Does it become a mental thing, and what do you do about it? Well, I, I think it does become a mental thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but obviously, you stress ball security every day in practice. You do drills. Uh, that emphasize ball security. I mean, we're always ripping at the ball. We're always running through drills where people are ripping at it. We've got machines they run through that tries to knock the ball loose. All those things, you emphasize it, uh, but it's a player that's got to hold on to the ball. And sometimes the more you talk about it, the worse it gets. So 
I mean, we've talked to Ronnie about it. He understands. He knows how critical it is for him to hold on to the ball, but running backs fumble every once in a while. No, they do. It happens. And, and the bad snap, you ever, hardly ever see that. I mean, you've got great snapper in terms of holders to Hobbits. I mean, that was an atypical play for the Aztecs. Yeah, it's kinda, it kind of shows what the night was about. Yeah. I mean, we're competing well, mm -hmm. but we're not making critical plays. And, and sometimes it's plays that are normal, easy plays to make. And I don't know if that's psychological or if that was just the day, but, uh, I mean, for us to drop a snap and not even get a chance for a field goal or Ronnie fumbling on the one-yard line, hopefully that's not a sign of things to come. Hopefully we're in a little bit of a slump and we're going to come out of it here soon. Yeah, and, it, and you talked about that, uh, and you've been quoted about that, that home field atmosphere, that home field advantage. 44,000, that student section was overflowing. You have established that. You have that at your stadium. Well, I hope they come back. I yeah. mean, you know, you know winning – uh, breeds that. Sure. Uh, but the teams that are consistent winners, they get that kind of crowd support no matter if they're winning or losing. Right. So, I, so I hope they come back. And, and we didn't give them a lot to cheer about in the first half. And then in the second half, I thought we made a little bit of comeback yeah. and the crowd got into it. And I think the crowd really helped. And I honestly believe the momentum was in our favor and we had a chance to win until we threw the interception. Sure. Come to 20 from uh, down 17 nothing halftime. And 2014, you really thought you got them in your place. And then and again, Ryan Lindley's been picked off one time all year, this time three times. Is there a disconnect? Because a lot of times people think quarterback interception, and what wasn't tips, so it had to be on him. But a lot of times, as you know and we know, that coaches know that somebody ran the wrong route, wrong read in terms of the defense. What was happening out there? Is that happening in terms of his receivers? They're not running the right routes, or is he having bad games? Well, I, I think he's in a little bit of a slump. I, I don't think he's playing up to his standards. He's not playing up to our standards. But whenever you have three interceptions, there's a combination of things. Right. He's not getting the protection, consistent protection he should get. Uh, him and the receivers are a little off on timing or the ball's a little bit behind the receiver or the receiver might run the wrong route. Right. There, there's a combination of all those things when you don't throw for at least 50 or 60% of your completions uh, and, and you have those kind of troubles. I mean, it can go back to the pressure that he's getting in his face, which doesn't happen all the time, but sure. it happened a couple of times. The receiver not being in the right spot at the right time, that could happen once in a while. It doesn't happen all the time. And maybe uh, Ryan not be quite as accurate with the football. So it's a combination of things when you have those troubles. Rocky Long, and that's behind him. That's TCU, done and done. Short-term memory. Next, the Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs. And that's not easy at all. We'll talk with Rocky about Air Force when Aztecs Now continues in a minute. On the shotgun, Ryan has time. Can he find somebody? Oh, one hand grab! Gavin Escobar, touchdown as that. Back with Rocky Long on Aztecs Now. Air Force goes into South Bend. And they get beat up. It's 59-33. doesn't sound like a ball game. What, what got me was typical Air Force. They're on the road. They have 311 yards in the first half. That's pretty scary. Same old Air Force. Yeah, I, I mean, you look at the score and everybody thinks oh, it yeah. was a one-sided game. Let, let me tell you, <laughs> no, Notre Dame never slowed them down. Now, they caused some turnovers. Sure. They intercepted a pass. Uh, so Notre Dame was hitting them hard, but they had no chance of slowing them down. They had 300, I think, 350 or 360 yards rushing in the game. They had over 200 yards passing. They almost had 600 yards total offense. They scored 33 points. <laughs> now, the real problem was that their defense didn't slow Notre Dame down right. at, e at all either. Right. So Notre Dame scored enough points. I, I would predict if we score 59 points, I think we'll win. I see that in the headline. <laughs> the media's going to jump on that. Long says, if we score, <laughs> and I believe that, I really do. The, uh, uh, their, their quarterback, Tim Jefferson, uh, as, as the old option quarterback, this guy, he had ran for uh, a touchdown, threw for 100. Give me, give me a scouting report on this guy. First of all, he's big, and most Air Force quarterbacks haven't been big. True. He's big and strong. He really throws the ball well, and, and they're multiple. They don't run just a triple option. They do a lot of one-back sets. He's in the shotgun a lot. 
he throws the ball really, really well, and he can throw it against different coverages too. So, so they give you the, the problem of trying to stop the triple option, so you get a triple option defense, and all of a sudden he's in the shotgun and they're in the spread formation. So they some, have some advantages that they don't normally have because usually wishbone quarterbacks don't throw it very well. Yeah, that's my next question in terms of, well, see, they've, they've seen Cal Poly and they've seen Army, but these guys do it differently, don't they? Yeah, they're a lot more multiple. They use a lot more formations. They do a lot of other things besides run the option. I mean, they, they're in the spread and they run the zone read and they do all the things we've seen in the past, but now they also give you the problem of the triple option. And so I think it gives them some advantages because you have to play triple option defense. So when they do want to throw it and get into a one-back set, they have some advantages because they only get a couple coverages. Good point. Now, this is, this is uh, Air Force is a tough place to play. Aztecs have had some tough times there, no question about that. And now, just mentioning this short work week, how have you structured this? Because this is unusual. Suddenly, you play a Saturday, you're playing again Thursday. In the old days, that never happened. Yeah, it's, uh, I've been through it a couple times where we've played on a Thursday and a Friday. Uh, you shorten practices a little bit, but you have to, we practiced on Sunday. We don't normally do that. Mm -hmm. We practice for an hour on Sunday. We practice for uh, an hour and a half at six o'clock in the morning on Monday. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we give Mondays off normally. Right. Uh, so we're going to practice at a normal time Tuesday, and that's uh, uh, usually a Thursday type practice, which isn't very long. So it's really a short work week. And now they have the same problem. I mean, it's not like we're at a disadvantage. Air Force has the exact same problem. Right. Uh, hopefully our experience with Army and Cal Poly uh, means we have seen the option a few times and we won't struggle like Notre Dame did. Coach, on your defense, we've got Logan Ketchum coming up here in a moment, number 31. Uh, give me a scouting report on this guy. Was, was a wide receiver and a safety. You moved, he's been moved to linebacker in his college days. I mean, not here, but he's a high school uh, safety. Give me a scouting report on this guy because he's played, overcome some injuries. He's playing now. Yeah, L Logan's a big guy that runs fast and, and has a good nose for the ball. Very intelligent football player. Knows where he's supposed to be, when he's supposed to be there. Uh, does a good job of reacting to plays. Uh, last week we moved him actually to free safety or the Aztec position. He'll play that position probably the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. And he was pretty productive in the game the other night, uh, which was new to him. And we think he'll just get better as the season goes along. Coach, good luck at Air Force. Big, another big game coming up. Thank you very much. Rocky Long will continue here with Aztecs now with Logan Ketchum, number 31, in a moment. Hands it all, slam dunk. The crowd going bananas. Three high baseline for three. Got it. Here come the Aztecs. Alley oop to Jamal Franklin. Shaw Lamb dunk. Don't stop believing. With the senior linebacker, Logan Ketchum, number 31. And uh, boy, all this talk about. Well, TCU is not as good, not as good, not as good as last year. And they lost those two shootouts, and they were really shootouts, you know, with SMU and Baylor. But, man, Logan, they were good. Yeah, I mean, there's no taking away from them. They came out. They played a good game. Obviously, they were fired up after uh, that loss to SMU, and they got players. Oh, did they ever. And when, and when you watch, you know, because uh, Coach had said this would be the fastest team mm -hmm. that you guys would meet probably all year long, not probably even faster than Boise State. When you see it on tape, as opposed to when you're down there on the field, how much different is it? Uh, I mean, it, it definitely takes a couple of plays to get used to it. Yeah. Um, I mean, you can recognize their speed uh, when when you're watching film, but you know, you learn to respect it when you're when you're playing in that first quarter and that first transitional moment. Um, after a while, everything catches up, though. Yeah. And, you know. you, see, you were, the game last year. Remember, it was it was 14 nothing. Had the flea flicker and scored then, and then uh, Jerome had the fumble recovery in the end zone mm -hmm. up 14 nothing. But when in this particular case. Suddenly you're down 17 nothing. What's your mindset in terms of, oh my gosh, look up at the scoreboard, look at the replays. How do you, how do you get that out of your mind and just focus on, got to come back? Because, in fact, you guys did come back. Yeah, I mean, I think it's the biggest part of defense is just having a short memory. And um, <laughs> obviously they made plays. Um, we got to learn from the mistakes. And I think that's the mentality. And then you just uh, you get over it and you move on. And, you know, obviously you can't let them make points like that. And I, I thought having been here a long time 
and having seen you know crowds of 18,000 and so forth for many years now. The, I understand the Sky Show has, has a, a factor there, but 57,000 was awesome. But this was no Sky Show. This mm -hmm. was 44,000 legitimate, a huge student section. Can you hear that? Can you feel that? I know you have to focus and, and, and like we just said, play. But that crowd atmosphere, that's got to help. Yeah, I mean, I, it helps tremendously. I've, I've seen it kind of on both sides yeah. now. Uh, for my first years here, I don't know, maybe ten to 15,000. Sure. And, um, you know, on Qualcomm, that looks like a pretty bleak stands. But uh, mm -hmm. um, I, it definitely helps, and the support really helps the guys, gets us motivated. Uh, when it comes down to it, it's just us on the field. But, you know, the student section filled up. That brings up camaraderie, and, uh, you know, I, th I think it helps us out. This is your senior year. Are you thinking about... Because this is this university has turned out a lot of linebackers, and you're in that mode. Have you thought about professional football? I mean, I think it's everybody thinks about it. You know, I think it's um, the goals of kids when they they're growing up, and I think I've been thinking about it since then. But um, I know it's cliche to say, but you know, we're just focusing on this year. I mean, I, w I would hate to uh, <laughs> even if that happens, I would hate to look back with any regrets on this year. So. And do you see yourself? Because I know you play in high school. You were uh, you were a linebacker. Then you were a safety mm -hmm. and a wide receiver. Would you, could you think you could play defensive back in the National Football League if you weren't big enough, they thought, to play linebacker or not? Yeah, I mean, I think it's just uh, the skills that they teach. And, um, you know, I got, I got it in my background, but, uh, you know, whatever they would want, I guess, is, is, yeah. is fine with me. So, so when Coach went to Colin Lockett and said, hey, man, I want you to switch from defense to wide receiver, you didn't say, whoa, whoa, Coach, wait. I played, I played wide receiver. What about me? That, that conversation didn't come well, up. Well, he never approached me about it. I might have had something to say. <laughs> yeah. I said, hey, man, wait a minute. Maybe, maybe you don't know my background yeah. back in Oak Park there. And, and give, me a geogra give me a map here where Oak Park is. Uh, it's Ventura County, just uh, north, north of L.A. a little bit, um, kind of uh, east of Malibu area. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Air Force. Mm -hmm. Spent some long days there. They can run the football triple option. You've seen it before with Cal Poly and with Army. I'm assuming I've seen them. They run it better than Army. They're better, aren't they? Uh, I mean, Army was a good team, but I think I think Air Force. Uh, you know, Air Force is another great team, and uh, it just comes down to assignment football against these kind of guys. And, you know, we never take the academy guys lightly, um, mm -hmm. especially after you know after a loss. We know they're going to come out and. Uh, I think it's really important that we all focus on our assignments because it's the biggest thing to the, the triple off. And, triple off. and, and what, is, what are they, as, as a player, you watch the film in practice uh, on, on Sunday after the game, what, what are they doing? What, what, how, it's so different from, from the defensive standpoint of what you normally see and what you just saw against TCU. Now you're switching back to this mode. Tough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's tough. Uh, when, you, when you watch them, they're fast. Uh, they're, they're scrappy, um, they'll get at your legs, and, uh, you know, I think uh, the most, the, the different thing is that they all individually know their job so well and perform it so well in every play that you have to be on your game or else they'll catch you slipping and, and, and get a 40 or 50 yard run in there. Logan, you've had a good career. I know you had a lot of injuries those, those first couple of years. Yeah. You've, you've come on, man. You've become a good player. I congratulate you on that. It's not easy. Well, thank you. Logan Catch, number 31, Aztec linebacker. Short week. He'll fly on Wednesday with the Charter and this team and the Air Force for the game on Thursday night. Making the transition now from football to golf. Aztec golf, specifically Aztec's women's golf. They made tremendous improvement of late. Now they have a new coach. She is Leslie Spaulding. She's in a report coming up next with Mike Costa as Aztecs Now continues. Aztecs women's golf coming off two consecutive NCAA bids and then an opening for a new coach. And now they have that new coach, Leslie Spaulding, 10 years on the LPGA Tour, coaching at Montana State for several years, and now the head coach on Montezuma Mesa. A report on her team and her from my colleague, Mike Costa. This really is our, our first time meeting uh, head women's golf coach, Leslie Spaulding. So coach, a belated welcome to San Diego State University. And uh, how are things going? How has been the, the process of becoming an Aztec? Oh, it's been amazing. I'm so excited to be here and um, just to be able to coach in this climate. And I came from Montana, so I'm just anxious for the winter. But it's, um, it's just been a whole step forward for me. Mm -hmm working with the team and it's it's actually just the perfect fit for me I think um, I think I can help these kids more than I could help maybe a little lesser athlete um, but 
um, it's been a great, I, ha I inherited a great group of girls and um, hopefully I'm the right fit for them to, you know, help them thrive under pressure and, and play better. If you can, uh, tell us a little bit about your, your golf background and, and how you ended up at, at, on Montezuma Mesa. Um, I'm a Montana girl and went to college in Alabama and then from there moved to Florida and played on the LPGA Tour for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that experience, I mean, I, I can't get away from golf. Um, but I worked in Montana for three and a half years uh, as, a, as a golf coach. But before that, I was trying to figure out if there was a business adventure I'd want to, you know, go down or whatever. But um, so golf is it for me and I found the perfect fit. I think. What was it uh, about the, the San Diego State program that attracted you to it? Just, uh, you know, just the potential, I think, here. I think the, the program has come far under Emily Klein, and then I think I can continue to make that uh, um, it a much better program um, just by recruiting. There's, you can't lose here. Mm -hmm. with recruiting. I mean, I would have died to have gone to a place like this when I was a kid. So um, I don't see why it can't be a national championship contender. You have a, a great core group of, of golfers here on this team. Talk about some of them that, that, that really stand out and, and maybe what you're expecting out of them this year. Uh, who stands out? G uh, Christine Wong has been the team leader the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, but I think she's even better than what she's shown us. Uh, so, you know, trying to make her better. She's a junior this year, um, Canadian national team player, and just an overall talent. I mean, the less she thinks, the better when she plays. So um, <laughs> try and uh, get her thinking not at all when she plays. Um, Gina Clark, who has developed as a player immensely, and so much of that is her attitude. She's so much fun. She's a player I can say, all right, Gina, you got two holes left, I need at least one birdie, and she comes in and she left one on the lip and the other one went in. Oh. So she, you know, when you've got a player like that that you can challenge her, mm -hmm. it's really, really fun to coach a kid like that. Um, and, you know, she led the tournament after one round, shut five under the first round at the first tournament. Um, so. Uh, and then Malin Anderson is a, is a senior from Sweden and um, just to, she had a great freshman year, not a great sophomore or junior year and hopefully wind up that four years of being the best she can. Talk about some of the, the highlights of the schedule this fall and, and what you expect from this season. Uh, you know, it, it being my first season, it, um, I just want to keep growing, you know, what they've got, but um, also, you know, we've got, we go to Stanford coming up. Uh, we uh, played the New Mexico tournament and we wind up at UNLV. And, um, you know, just to get them prepared for poor weather, possibly wind in Vegas, you know, mm -hmm. and, and just to try and get them um, better with our short game. That's what we work on every day is short game. Well, coach, I know that uh, all of the Aztec golf fans are delighted that you're here that you're Thank ready to you. take the next step with this program. Again, welcome to San Diego State, and thanks for your time. Thank you. That is Aztecs now for these three, two Aztecs. Big game, Air Force Academy at Colorado Springs on Thursday on CBS College Sports on Channel 4 in San Diego. I'll have the radio call and the play-by-play on AM 600 KOGO. Thanks to Coach Long, thanks to Logan Ketchum, and thanks to you. We'll see you again on Aztecs Now.